a while back I posted a video on the chemistry of soap making and it was fine but I think I can improve on it so this is a revision of that video so the nature of soap is that it's a mixture of the sodium salts of fatty acids and glycerol anything else uh, any other chemical mixture is not going to be a true soap uh, it's made by reacting lye which is sodium hydroxide with plant or animal fats or oils there are people who are concerned about um, handmade soaps and say they don't want anything that has lye in it and there's a, a misconception there um, if you use a lye calculator and you mix it correctly uh, after the chemical reaction occurs to make soap, there won't be any lye actually present anymore. It'll all just be soap. So the fats or oils that we use are uh, typically triglycerides. You've probably heard your doctor or your nutritionist talking about di triglycerides in your diet and how that affects your heart health. Um, but a triglyceride is this structure. Uh, on the left side circled is a um, backbone known as glycerol and then attached to that glycerol are three fatty acids so that's where the tri part of the triglyceride comes from. Glycerol itself also known as glycerin has hydrogens over there on the right of those oxygens uh, if you've had no chemistry C stands for carbon O stands for oxygen H stands for hydrogen so on the far right there we have three hydrogens and in a triglyceride, those have been replaced with these big, long uh, fatty acid molecules. And so these are the fatty acids that were shown in that first triglyceride picture. Um, on the left, as it's drawn here, we have a carbon with a double bonded oxygen up above it. It looks like an equal sign there that indicates two chemical bonds. And then to the left of the carbon is an oxygen, and to the left of it, a hydrogen. That uh, group there is known as an acid group or a carboxylic acid group and then to the right of that is a long chain of carbons and they are surrounded by hydrogens carbon by its chemical nature always forms four bonds so on the far left there that acid carbon has uh, one bond to the carbon next to it two bonds to the oxygen above it one bond to the oxygen to the left of it so that's four if you look at the carbons in that long chain, they have a bond to each of the carbons to their sides as well as two hydrogens. So what we're looking at there is stearic acid. That's one of the most common soap making acids. It has 18 carbons and it's said to be saturated. I'll get to that in a minute. Another very common uh, fatty acid is the one in the middle there, lauric acid, and it structurally is exactly the same as stearic acid, except that the chain of carbons is shorter. It's only 12 carbons long instead of 18. But if you look down at the bottom, the uh, chain there where the blue arrow is pointing is an area that is said to be unsaturated. In that case, once again, we have 18 carbons. So in that sense, it's identical to the stearic acid on top. But between the ninth and 10 carbons, uh, there is a double bond, two bonds between those carbons. And since each carbon can only have a total of four bonds, that means we had to lose two of the hydrogens that could have been there otherwise. So the, the bottom two carbons, as it's shown here, are missing. So we say that that molecule is unsaturated because it does not have the maximum possible number of hydrogens attached. So that is oleic acid, which is 18 carbons, and it's monounsaturated because it only has one uh, unsaturated area, one double bond. There are acids that we'll see a little later that have more than one. Uh, as that is drawn, the way I had to type it on my computer, it makes a nice straight left to right chain of carbons. In actual fact, wherever you have a double bond, there's going to be a bend or a kink in the molecule. So that um, crooked line at the bottom of this diagram shows more or less what the shape of that molecule would be like in real life.
So again, back to the original slide I showed of a triglyceride. Here's the, the complete triglyceride. It has a glycerol group on the left. It has three fatty acids to the right, all hooked up to make one triglyceride. The other thing we use in soap making then is lye, which is sodium hydroxide. It's uh, the chemical symbol for sodium is Na. That comes from the Latin word natrium. And then it has a, an OH group known as a hydroxyl or a hydroxide group. So when you dissolve sodium hydroxide, NaOH, in water, it breaks apart almost immediately to become free-floating ions, as they're called. An ion is an electrically charged particle. So the sodium ions have a one plus electrical charge. The hydroxyl ions have a one minus electrical charge. And it's those ions that are actually going to react with our triglycerides to make soap. So here is finished soap. We have a glycerol on the left. We have the three sodium salts of fatty acids on the right. So that mixture by definition is soap. What happened originally was in the presence of that extremely alkaline lye solution, um, the fatty acids broke away from the glycerol. So now you had four molecules there, one glycerol and three fatty acids. And then the sodium from the sodium hydroxide attached itself to the fatty acids and the hydrogens um, there are hydrogens just free floating out in the in the uh, solution the, the mixture they attach to the glycerol so we end up then with um, the sodium salt of these fatty acids that process is known as saponification and that's what happens as a soap hardens so let's talk a little more about these fatty acids. They tend to be anywhere from 12 to 22 carbons long. There are shorter ones and longer ones in nature, but most of the ones we use in soap making are 12, 14, 16, or 18 carbons long. Almost all naturally existing fatty acids have an even number of carbons. It's kind of an odd thing to find an odd numbered one. And in soap making, that's not significant. Generally, the longer the chain is, the harder your soap will be. And the shorter the chain is, the softer the soap will be, everything else being equal. So that's one of the reasons you might choose one type of oil or fat over another. Uh, if you want a very hard soap, you might pick something that has more of the long carbon chain fatty acids. Also, a saturated fatty acid makes a harder soap than an unsaturated one. So again, in choosing a fat or an oil to use, you can decide uh, how hard you want your soap to end up based on how saturated it is as well as how long the carbon chains are. Polyunsaturated oils, that is oils that have more than one double bond in the chain, tend to go rancid over time and you, you end up with what's known to soap makers as, as DOS or dreaded orange spots where the soap develops spotty areas that are orange in color and it develops kind of a, an off smell that is unpleasant. So we'd rather avoid that if possible. And for that reason, generally you try to use uh, oils and fats that are fairly low in polyunsaturated um, fatty acids. Animal fats tend to be saturated. Plant oils tend to be unsaturated. There are exceptions. Um, coconut oil is fairly saturated. Lard is fairly unsaturated but um, in general, that'll be the case. So saturated uh, oils tend to be solid at room temperature, and we tend to refer to them as fats, and then those that have more unsaturation tend to be liquid at room temperature, and we tend to refer to them as oils. So unsaturated fatty acids tend to make your soap slower to trace and slower to solidify. So if you're trying for a really a uh, complicated color swirl where it's going to take you some time to work, you may want to choose oils that have more unsaturated fatty acids in them just to buy yourself some time. On the other hand, if you're making a solid color soap or, or something that's a very simple pattern that you can mix quickly, um, you may want to use more uh, saturated uh, oils or fats just so that you get a much harder bar of soap in the long run.
And as I said before, if you use too much polyunsaturated fatty acid, your soap will be more likely to turn rancid over time. So for example, a lot of people use canola oil to slow down trace in their soap. But if you use too much canola oil, um, your soap will go bad over time. And if you want it to last, you shouldn't use too much. I try to stay at 20% canola or less, usually much less if I want a long-lasting bar. By long-lasting, I mean you can store it without it going rancid. I don't mean it will last longer in the shower. So here are the common fatty acids that we find in soap. Again, there are lots of others, but these are the ones that make up maybe 90, 95% of all of the fatty acids you deal with in a soap. Uh, lauric acid up on top there has 12 carbons, and then myristic acid has 14 carbons. Palmitic acid has 16 carbons, and stearic acid has 18 carbons. Otherwise, these are identical. It's just the length that is different. The shorter the molecule is, the more likely it is to be soluble in water. So lauric and myristic acids are fairly soluble, whereas palmitic and stearic acid are less soluble. For that reason, lauric and myristic acids tend to make a lot more suds or foam when you use them. And if you want a very sudsy soap, you try to increase the percentage of, the, of those two oils. Also, they tend to be more cleansing. So if you want something that will cut grease very well, uh, you would want more of those. On the other hand, if you use too much of them, it may dry your skin out because it's actually uh, washing away the natural oils that keep your skin moist. The unsaturated fatty acids, uh, I, I don't really understand from a biochemical standpoint why this is the case because with, with sat saturated fatty acids, as I said, they vary in length from 12 to 18 carbons. But with the unsaturated fatty acids we use to make uh, soaps and that are in our naturally existing vegetable oils and, and uh, animal fats, they are almost always precisely 18 carbons long. I, I have no idea why that is, but it is. So what we have here are the four most common unsaturated fatty acids that you'll find in soap making. The top one, oleic acid, named that way because it, it is common in olive oil. 18 carbons, it has one point of, mono, of unsaturation between uh, carbons 9 and 10, uh, and we've seen that one before. If you add another uh, uh, double bond, another point of unsaturation between carbons 12 and 13, you get linoleic acid, the next one down. It's exactly like olive oil, except it has one more point of unsaturation, one more double bond. If you add a third double bond between carbons 15 and 16, then you get linoleic acid, the third, third one down. And that's both of those two, linoleic and linolenic acid, are said to be polyunsaturated. And remember, the more, the more level of unsaturations you have, the more likely that soap is to go rancid over time and develop dreaded orange spots. So things like canola oil tend to be fairly high in linoleic and linoleic, linolenic acid, whereas something like olive oil is very low in those two, but higher in oleic acid. The bottom one there shown is different than from the rest. This is ricinoleic acid. The only common oil that we get that in is castor oil. And as you may know, castor oil is often used by soap makers to stabilize the, the sudsiness of the other oils. Uh, notice that ricinoleic acid is exactly the same as oleic acid up on top, with one exception, and that is carbon-12 instead of having two hydrogens attached to it, has one hydrogen and a hydroxyl group, that oxygen and hydrogen. By putting that there, that oil, even though it's 18 carbons long, is more soluble in water, and so it behaves more like one of the shorter cleansing fatty acids, and specifically, it stabilizes the suds in your soap. And so a lot of people like to use just a few percent of ricinoleic acid in their soap. If you use too much of it, it makes the soap feel slimy or gummy. So once again, here's our finished soap uh, with three different fatty acids and the glycerol on the left. So uh, if we look on a soap uh, lie calculator, and this one happens to be soapcalc.com, which is the one I most often use, They'll often show characteristics of the soap, such as hardness, cleansing, conditioning, bubbliness, creaminess, and then the iodine and INS numbers. 
Uh, most people, including me, don't understand those very well, so we'll ignore those. But the other things there, the hardness, the cleansing, the conditioning, the bubbliness, those are things that you would want to know about qualities in your soap, and you may want to plan for a specific soap based on those. So down at the bottom then, in soapcalc.com, they show the percentage of each of those common uh, fatty acids in a particular oil. So in this case, on the right, highlighted, we're, do, we're using soybean oil there, and you can see that it has uh, no lauric or myristic acid, so it's not very cleansing. It has a significant amount of palmitic acid, but most of its acids are uh, unsaturated, oleic, linoleic, and linolenic. Notice that it has a fairly high linoleic acid content, and so you would expect soy oil-based soap to be fairly soft, not very cleansing, um, highly conditioning. If you look up above there, the conditioning level is 82. That's quite high. But because so much of that unsaturated fat is in the form of linoleic and linolenic acids, uh, a pure soybean oil soap would likely go bad after a few months of storage. Compare that then to palm oil, one of the most commonly used vegetable oils, and notice that it has a little bit of myristic acid. It has a lot of palmitic acid. Uh, palmitic acid was named for the fact that it came from palm oil. It also has a substantial amount of oleic acid. So uh, a pure palm oil soap is not a bad soap. It doesn't have a lot of cleansing power, but it's, it's pretty good texturally. Um, uh, relatively low linoleic acid and then no linolenic acid. So very good soap making oil and provides hardness. Compare that then to palm kernel oil flakes and notice the hardness number up there, it's 90. That's an extremely hard soap. And that's because if you notice, almost all of its fatty acids are uh, saturated. Very high lar lauric and myristic acid, so it's highly cleansing. And then the rest of them are palmitic and stearic acid with just a little oleic acid. So extremely hard. If you use it all by itself, you'd get a brittle soap almost too hard to even use. It wouldn't dissolve in the shower. Um, but mixed with other uh, soap making ingredients, it, it's something you can use to make your soap harder and more long lasting. Uh, olive oil then, one of the most commonly used uh, fatty acids, very high in oleic acid. It does have some saturated palmitic and stearic acid, but no lauric or myristic acid. So it's not very cleansing, it's highly conditioning, and uh, generally soft, although a, a pure Castile soap will get quite hard after a period of months of curing. Uh, lard then, made from pig fat, uh, is kind of an interesting mixture as animal fats go. Notice that it has quite a lot of unsaturated fat. The, the oleic and linoleic uh, acid contents are fairly high, and so as animal fats go, lard is not particularly saturated, and a pure lard soap is really a, a decent soap. Again, not very cleansing, but has a nice texture to it, and it's great for mixing with coconut oil or something else that has a higher uh, uh, cleansing characteristic. This is coconut oil then, extremely highly cleansing, uh, with 48% lauric acid, 19% myristic acid, fairly low levels of everything else, so it's highly saturated, highly cleansing, and um, often mixed with other oils to improve the cleansing or the hardness of the soap. It's also fairly hard by itself there. It's at 79. Uh, cocoa butter, another fairly hard material, uh, has a lot of palmitic and stearic acids. It's not very cleansing. It does have some oleic acid. And I'm not sure why this is, but it, it seems to me that when I use cocoa butter in a soap, it really speeds up the trace and the hardening rate. So if I want to do a complicated uh, swirled soap, I tend to avoid using cocoa butter at all. Although in a, in a fast moving soap where you don't mind it, it gives you a really nice texture in the soap. Castor oil then, as I mentioned, is the primary source of ricinoleic acid. That's fully 90% of the, of the fatty acid present in that oil. Um, no cleansing ability, um, highly conditioning, but really the reason we're using that is to stabilize the bubbles of the other oils that we're using. I usually use it around anywhere from 3 to 5 percent. You wouldn't want to go too much above that. Canola oil, as I mentioned very early on in this video, is often used to slow down the reaction of the soap so that you can have a lot of time to work on a complicated swirl. It ha it's very high in unsaturated um, um, 
fatty acids in it, but fairly high in linoleic and linolenic acids. So you want to keep the percentage canola low enough that your soap won't go rancid, but up to about 20, maybe 25% is fine, and you can make a very nice soap with it. Beef tallow is a lot like lard, except it's even harder. It has a higher percentage of palmitic and stearic acids, a lower percentage than of the unsaturated fatty acids. So it makes a very highly, um, uh, very hard soap. Uh, also, it's, it's somewhat cleansing. It has some myristic and lauric acids. Um, fairly fast to trace, but not as fast as palm oil, and certainly not as fast as, as palm kernel oil. So I like to use quite a lot of tallow in a lot of my soaps. It, it makes a very hard, very nice soap. So I hope that um, little quick lesson in soap chemistry is helpful in understanding how you might choose certain fats or acids over others in making your soap.